When we think about oil production in the Arctic, we don't really think about the people who live there. The actual original oil producers in the Arctic are its indigenous people. I'm thinking of seal oil here, which they used to use for light and heat because you can't really find any trees up there to burn. We need to think about this angle because whenever we talk about industrialization in the Arctic, we have to recognize that people live there, they carry on their way of life there, and in large parts of the Arctic, they depend on that industrialization. In the late 1970s, Greenpeace launched a campaign against commercial sealing, and native Arctic people, including the Inupiat in Alaska, were caught up in that. They weren't commercial sealers. Sealing was a way of life for them. It provided oil, it provided meat. Those people suffered even though all they were doing was really carrying on a way of life that had carried on for hundreds or thousands of years. Eventually, in 2014, Greenpeace actually apologized for its conduct in that campaign, saying that it needed to decolonize its thinking. Now, fast forward to today, and we had a recent controversy about the Willow World Project in Alaska. And similarly, it can feel like the voices of the native people who live there get a bit forgotten as we talk about it in terms of the impact on global climate change and other global concerns rather than local concerns. There is not a neat separation between the traditional subsistence way of life on the North Slope and what we tend to think of as a more modernized or westernized economy. The people who go hunting there tend to use snow machines. When they go out whaling, they use boats that burn fuel and they also, to a large degree, depend on the income that comes from the oil and gas production that occurs on the North Slope. The North Slope borough, which is the biggest borough by area in the United States, it's actually bigger than 39 states, depends for 90% of its revenue on oil and gas uh, taxes. The people on the North Slope are well aware of the impacts of climate change from burning fossil fuels. But they're also aware that they, 11,000 strong, we're talking a number of people who wouldn't even fill Madison Square Garden. They're aware that their own contribution to climate change is negligible. Similar to the way we have to figure out a way to transition to a decarbonized world, they need to also have time and opportunity to transition to a post-carbon economy there. This is a local dimension and an indigenous dimension to a debate that is often framed in planetary terms, and it makes it much more complex than we often take it to be.